Hello everyone, this is Shiva from funapps.online and today we are going to learn how to connect to an SQLite database. Now, to do this, uh, we need three things. Uh, one is uh, the DB browser for SQLite, uh, which we will use to create the database and the tables inside it. Uh, we also need dbutil.bas, which will help us to connect the B4A app into this uh, SQLite database. And the third, of course, we need the SQL library, which is already a part of the B4A program. Now, I have already downloaded the DB browser application on my desktop. Uh, I've provided the link uh, in the description. So from where you can download the DB browser application. So let's create a new project in B4A. And now I'm opening the DB browser SQLite and we'll create a new database. The database has to be within the files folder of a project and let's call this database as first database. Here I'm creating a new table, db details, sorry, uh, table details, and we'll have two fields, name and age. So let's give name as a text type and age as integer. Okay, so the table has been created. Now let's add some records. Okay, I think five is good enough. Okay, I'm clicking on write changes and saving the database. Let's go and see the files folder. Uh, yep, the database is here. And now what we need to do is basically insert the D SQL library into our project. So I'm going to go to libraries manager and select click on SQL. So by default, the library is added into a program. To copy the dbutil.bas file, which is there on my desktop into the project folder. Let's add this module. So project add existing module. And I'm going to select dbutil.bas. We'll use the option copy to project folder. So this is a class file that's already created uh, by uh, Aaron from B4A. And uh, one of the reasons we can easily connect to an SQL Lite database is by using this class file. Well, I'm creating a variable SQL1 of the SQL type. And now 
we need to check whether the file is there or not. Now by default, uh, when we create a variable SQL1, it will check whether the database is in the direct internal directory of the Android app. Uh, now this is a bit weird because generally whatever files that we store in the files folder, it is available using file.dir assets. But when we're creating a SQLite database, it needs to be in the directory internal folder. So over here, what I'm trying to do is I'm checking whether the file exists or not. If it doesn't exist, then I will copy that file from the DIR assets into directory internal. So what I'm trying to do over here is if the file does not exist in DIR internal, I will copy it from the directory assets folder to the internal folder and then I'm initializing the SQL1 object. If the file already exists, then I will automatically initialize it. So let me save this program and now let's open the designer. What we we'll need to do is we we'll need to put some labels or buttons to display the data from our table. So I'm going to add two labels over here. Okay, and I'll add two buttons, left and right. Okay, so the buttons will help me move the records. And let's save the layout. And let's click on generate members to generate. So over here, as you can see, I am using the click option. What I want to do is when I press the left button, it should go to the previous record. And when I press the right button, it should go to the next record. Okay, let's go back to the main program.
we have already connected uh, to our database what we now need is to connect to a table now to do that b4 a provides an option uh, called as a cursor the cursor will store all the data from the table from an output of a select statement so i'm creating a cursor v cursor sql cursor and uh, this will store the records from the select statement and uh, i'm just creating two variables counter and the total number of records now these two variables will help us uh, guide to move to the next or the previous records So I'm using the exec query option of SQL1 and I'm going to run a select statement. So it will be select star from table details. And the output of this select statement will be stored in the SQL cursor. just putting a condition so if the row count is zero that means there is no records into the table i'll just show a message no records as we will store the number of records into the variable total records now over here the record count in the cursor starts from zero so since we had five uh, records in our table the number stored in total records will be 4 and I'm going to put the counter as 0 so that means I want to show the first record when our app starts Now before we show the record, we need to move the cursor to the first position or the first record or row. So I will put the position as counter which is 0 and now I will display the fields in the table into the label that we have created. So label underscore name dot text will show my name variable. So label underscore name dot text will show the field name and label underscore age will show the age field from the table now the get string function within the cursor helps us to get the data from a particular column uh, we need to specify the column name uh, this is case sensitive so please ensure that you enter the column name correctly Okay, let's create the code for the button. What we want is when someone presses the right button, it should go to the next record. And when someone presses the left button, it should go to the previous record. Now, we will check whether if the counter is equal to the total records, which means that we have reached the last record. And uh, if it's that's the case, let's display our message. Else, we'll increase the counter by one. So what will happen is when someone presses the right button, it will increase the counter by one and we will change the cursor position and then display the data at that particular point.
For the left button, uh, it's very similar. If the counter is zero, that means we have reached the first record. Uh, we'll show the message that we have reached the first record. And if not, then we'll minus the counter by one. Okay, the program is over. Let's run it and see how it looks. Now we need to add the runtime permission library as well. So I've just selected runtime permission from the library manager. And now let's run the program. Okay, as you can see, we are on the first record because the counter was zero. And when I press the right button, it moves forward and backwards when I press the left button. So that's it on this part of connecting to SQLite. In the next tutorial, we'll see how to add and update records uh, into the database. If you really like the video, uh, please click the like button and uh, do subscribe to our channel for more how to videos using basic for Android. Thank you once again. Uh, this is Shiva from funapps.online.